Okay, so I finally got a chance to play the Final Fantasy VII Remake for the first time since its release. But I got to play the upgraded version on the PS5 that comes with the additional DLC. So during my time in the game, I find myself kept coming back to the same question, and rather simple one at that. Does a modernised version of a celebrated classic game mean that it needs to be mediocre? And that's something I'm hoping to look over in this, in this video. So right off the bat, I'm just going to say I have played the original FF7 and I'm not one of those people who desperately love the game, but I can appreciate how much of an impact it has had on gaming history and its place in pop culture. I think trying to do a direct comparison of the two would not be appropriate simply because while these games share the same title, their gameplay styles, storytelling and overall story narrative are the complete opposite of each other. I will not be spoiling the events of either game as I understand there are still people who are eager to play both of them for the first time. I'm mainly going to be going over the core mechanics of the remake and how I feel it excels in some places but completely misses the mark in others. The first up is gameplay. The FF7 remake foregoes the original turn based combat system for a more high octane and action packed combat system, although there is a system that mimics the original in a way with you simply watching the combat unfold whilst issuing commands to the party. The new combat system still retains some of the party swapping and ordering of actions and abilities. I personally really enjoyed my time with this combat system as it felt more... it felt like it fit more of the modern take on the game. And it suited the incredible graphics by a few very out of place low resolution textures and a fantastic engine. The player controls Cloud Strife, the main character of the game, but along the path you are introduced to new party members each with their own unique weapons and combat styles, whether it be ranged magic and healing, or up close and personal brawling, you tend to have what you need for certain situations and enemies. Now whilst the combat is enjoyable, I did find it very limited in just how much you could extend it. It tends to just break down and keep hitting the same enemy with the occasional weakness element to increase the stagger bar, and then you get your hits in. One annoyance though that I mainly had with the combat is that the AI enemies will just instantly lock on to whatever character you're controlling. Whether it be mid enemy combo or even when your previously controlled character is still doing their attack to the enemy, it still just instantly turns to you and starts attacking the player that you're controlling. That got quite irritating, especially towards the end. Now the boss fights in the game are fun, but they all stick to the same formula really, only a few stand out to me, one of which is the final boss, and the other is a hidden boss behind the side quest, but more on the side quest in a minute. One aspect I was really excited for was the summons mechanic, in which you can summon a materia to help fight alongside you. However, I was expecting a lot more variety available than what was given. Hopefully this is something that can be expanded upon with the switch to next gen development and make them feel more grandiose. And also something I didn't realise in my first playthrough, there is some summons that are behind a free DLC. It's just the game never mentions that at all. So there's something to, you know, keep your eye out for. Now onto the main thing that I feel brings down the game mainly. And it's the side quest. I don't think I've ever played a game this modern with such terrible side quests. That are there purely to add to a playtime that's already stretched thin. The side quests are just mundane. They tend to follow the formula of talk to NPC, find a certain item or location, fight enemies, return to NPC, and voila, side quest done. It's not even like the side quests do anything to expand the characters or the world. They just exist. I'm struggling at this point in time whilst writing to remember one besides one in the latest stages of the game that's purely memorable because of the boss fight that awaits you at the end. The side quest kind of show my issue with the main story also, it just feels like it is long for the sake of being long. The first few chapters are engaging, but the further you get on into the game, you start to realise that the way of telling a story is just dragging on, with some of the chapters just having no impact on the overall narrative. I think the game could have benefited from being a bit more precise and cutting it down, instead of having the 18 chapters, I think 14 would have been a lot better and a lot more condensed and keeping the narrative flowing. I never really like it when by the end of a game I find myself thinking okay can this just hurry up and end please? 
And that's not to say the story is not engaging. It is, but it just feels like it overstays its welcome a bit. And there are some very standout moments in the game. The final boss fight for me is the best. And it has quite a good repercussion on the narrative. Speaking of narrative, I could see how the final 10 minutes or so of the narrative could be confusing to people who are new to the franchise or who haven't played the original. The ending kind of makes the game feel like a remake that's disguised as a sequel. But for me, as someone who's played most of the Final Fantasy series, the ending has me more intrigued to what will happen in the sequel, and it's clear they are taking a different direction with the overall narrative of the game, hence the two confirmed sequels, and I'm excited to see where they go. Now I know I said I won't compare the original and the remake of Final Fantasy VII, didn't say I won't compare the remake to another modern remake that I feel does the job a bit better. That's Resident Evil 2. For me, the Resident Evil 2 remake is the gold standard of video game remakes. It takes what worked so well and brings it into the modern generation with changes that don't hinder itself, but only amplify what makes the original so great. RE2 took the tank controls and corridor cameras and replaced them with the modern over your shoulder camera, and it works very well and takes the environments of the original and makes them so much more atmospheric and immersive. Something I feel FF7 Remake could have done a lot better with the engine and levels it had available. Comparing the narrative between the two remakes would be unfair due to obvious size differences and the stories being told, but the structure in RE2 never feels bogged down, and in fact going back through the same environments alongside the story that's unfolding, the environments and the characters showcase the difference from when you were there earlier. When we see stuff like that unfold in FF7 Remake, the characters tend to experience something traumatic and they never mention it again for the entirety of the rest of the game, or don't seem majorly affected by it. The only one tends to be one of the side characters who is one of the better developed characters in the remake. Overall, I don't think the Final Fantasy Remake is a bad game. It has parts that shine bright, but those bright parts are dulled by the shadows of modern JRPG game design, and the need for the bigger is better case of game development nowadays. I hope you enjoyed my little small review opinion piece on Final Fantasy VII Remake, I'm trying to get back on track now with consistent uploads, so by all means if there's a game or a series that you'd like me to check out, let me know in the comments below. As always, be safe and take care.